Hello friends, this video on fractions and decimals part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Equivalent fractions. So what are equivalent fractions? These are different fractions representing the same number even though the fractions are different because like the example which I considered when you think of 9 by 3 and you compare it with 21 by 7 they are definitely two different fractions. But these two fractions are representing the same number and that is why they are categorized as equivalent fractions. So equivalent. Now had we wanted we could have told them equal fractions but they are not equal because the fractions are actually different but they are representing the same thing. That is why they are equivalent. So let us consider this example. Let's say that there is a pizza and this little boy wants to have pizza. What he does? He cuts this pizza into eight equal halves. So into eight equal slices it has been cut. And how many slices does he eat? He eats two slices of pizza. So that means if I ask how much fraction or what part of the pizza did the boy eat? So the boy ate two slices out of total 8 slices that means 2 by 8 which is nothing but 1 by 4 because 2 into 4 is 8. So basically he, the boy ate 1 fourth of the pizza. So this is one scenario. In another scenario this another boy is again hungry and he has a pizza. What he does is instead of dividing it into 8 equal halves he divided it into 4 equal halves. Right? And then he ate one half. So that means he ate one slice out of the four slices. So if I ask you what fraction of the pizza is being eaten by this boy, it would be one slice out of four slices, which is one fourth of the pizza. So whether this boy ate two slices out of eight slices or this boy ate one slice out of four slices, it is all the same. That's because two by eight and one by four are equivalent fractions. So 1 by 8 and 2 by 1 by 4 and 2 by 8, these are examples of equivalent fractions. Now I hope you understand what are equivalent fractions. They are not equal, they are different fractions, but they represent the same number. So let us consider more examples. So the first example that we would consider is 3 by 9 and 7 by 21. So 3 by 9 corresponds to 1 by 3. 7 by 21 also corresponds to 1 by 3. So this is an example of equivalent fraction. Similarly 10 by 20 and 4 by 8. So even though they look very different from each other but this represents 1 by 2. This also represents 1 by 2. So they are again equivalent fractions. Now let us see how do we make equivalent fractions. So if I ask you make equivalent fractions of 1 by 2. Make equivalent fractions of 1 by 2. So let's say that is a task that is being given to you. So how can you make equivalent fractions? Now 1 by 2. Right? So this is the given fraction. Now if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same whole number, will that affect the fraction? No. Because when we are multiplying it with to the numerator as well as to the denominator, let's say we multiply both numerator and denominator by 2. So, so the value of the fraction remains unchanged because whatever we have multiplied, we have also divided in a way right because if whatever like it, it is something like this let's say that you have a piggy bank and there are 100 rupees in the piggy bank okay so you take out 50 rupees to buy a notebook and your brother puts in 50 rupees into the pig, piggy bank so that means the net amount which is there in the piggy bank is still 100 because you have taken out 50 but your brother at the same time had put 50. So that means the total content inside is still 100. So the total amount in the piggy bank remains unchanged. So the same thing happens here. You multiply something to the numerator and you multiply the same thing to the denominator as well. In that case the overall value of the fraction remains the same. 
So in this way, by adding the same whole, by multiplying the same whole number to the numerator and denominator, you can make many equivalent fractions. So this shows 2 by 4 is an equivalent fraction. Now instead of multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2, if you multiply them by 3, so what do you get? You get 3 by 6. So 3 by 6 is also an equivalent fraction of 1 by 2. Now instead of multiplying by 3, if you multiply by 4, what do you get? You get 4 by 8. So 2 by 4, 3 by 6, 4 by 8 and so on. These are all ex equivalent fractions of 1 by 2. In fact, this is how we make equivalent fractions of a given fraction. That is by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same whole number. Fine. So this was all about the different types of fractions. Now, how do we compare two fractions? Like on the screen, you see a couple of fractions like 2 by 3, 7 by 3, 1 by 3, 2 by 5. Now, if I ask you which fraction is bigger or which fraction is smaller, how do you determine which one is bigger or which one is smaller? So the first scenario where we have the same denominator, what, what do we call these type of fractions? Two fractions having the same denominator. They are called like fractions, correct? So here 2 by 3 and 7 by 3, they are like fractions. So how do we know which is bigger? Now since the denominator is already same, so we do not need to bother about it. So the fraction with a bigger numerator is bigger. So here in this case, one is 2, the other one is 7. Now we know that 7 is greater than 2 or 2 is smaller than 7. Therefore, 7 by 3 is also greater than 2 by 3. So, this is greater. Now, the challenge comes when the denominator is are not the same. In this case, it is 1 by 3. Here it is 2 by 5. So, whether we should compare the numerator or we should compare the denominator. So, that's the problem we have. So, what do we do? So, the first step in this case would be to make their denominator same. So, we have to ensure that we reach, we make equivalent fractions of both of these frac numbers so that we arrive at numbers with same denominators. So, how do we do that? So, for that what we do is the first step for that would be to find out LCM of 3 and 5 that is the denominators. Now what is LCM? Least common multiple. You remember we had learned about how to find HCF and LCM in class 6. If you have forgotten then refer the videos of uh, maths videos of class 6 to understand LCM in detail. Now least common multiple means it is a number which is going to be a common multiple of both 3 as well as 5. Now for 3 and 5 the least common multiple is 15. Right? So, because 3 into 5 is 15 and 5 into 3 is also 15. So, it is a common multiple of 3 and 5. Now, once we have find this out, what we do is you consider both the fractions one by one. So first, we consider 1 by 3. What we do? We multiply both the numerator and denominator by a whole number such that in the denominator, such that in the product, the denominator is 15 because 15 is the LCM. So 3 into what gives 15? 3 into 5. So we will multiply the numerator also by 5. So what do we get? We get 5 by 15. Similarly, we will do it for the other fraction that is 2 by 5. So we want to multiply the numerator and denominator by a same whole number such that in the result, the denominator is 15. So 5 into 3 is 15. So we will multiply the numerator also by 3. So this becomes 6 by 15. So you see here by looking at this, you can say that 1 by 3 and 5 by 15. These are equivalent fractions because they represent the same value. Similarly, 2 by 5 and 6 by 15. These are also equivalent fractions because they represent the same value. Now it is very easy to compare these two values because you have the same denominator and in the numerator 5 is less than 6. Therefore 5 by 15 will be less than 6 by 15 and therefore 1 by 3 is less than 2 by 5. So we can say 1 by 3 is less than 2 by 5. 
So in this way, we can compare two fractions. So even if they have different denominators, the, our first step would be to convert each fraction into an equivalent fraction such that both the fractions have same denominators. And for that, we find out LCM of the denominators. So this is, this is the exact process that we follow. So the tip that we need to remember while comparing fractions is that make sure that the denominators are same. Now, if it is already same in the question as in the first case, then your job is almost done. If it is not same, then by finding out LCM, we will have to ensure that the denominators are same. The one with bigger numerator is the bigger fraction. Now, once the denominators are same, one with bigger numerator is bigger fraction. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes, and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.